We're pleased to be joined with Matthew Barry here on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Matthew, we've been obviously getting your fantasy football advice for a very long time now. Thank you so much for that, and it's a, it's a privilege to see you. How are you doing? I appreciate it. Thanks. I'm doing great. I'm at the Combine. Get better. I know. It's, it's unbelievable. And in Jacksonville, we might actually have some Jaguars that are now fantasy relevant. We haven't really had that all that often over the last 10 years. Well, you guys did this year um, a lot of sleepers that panned out, and I think they're going to be a lot more expensive come draft day based on the success of the Jaguars this year. I'm excited about this offense. Look, Doug Peterson's always been a fantasy-friendly coach. When he was in Philadelphia, he was, and obviously this past year in Jacksonville, he was. You know, you sort of work through the players, right? I mean, obviously Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence is a borderline top 10, top 12 fantasy quarterback as well. Um you know, because he uses his legs and because it's going to be a pass-first offense. I'm excited to see what uh, Calvin Ridley, assuming he gets cleared and added to the team, what he adds to this offense. We'll see if Evan Ingram comes back. But obviously, big first year for Christian Kirk and Zay Jones in that offense. Uh, Seems like they both really had a great connection with Trevor. So I think, you know, Kirk and Zay Jones will both be viable fantasy players. Ingram, if he comes back top 10 fantasy tight end and Ridley's kind of the the ultimate sleeper I don't believe there'll be a fantasy football draft this year where Travis Etienne gets out of the first round yeah he was uh obviously incredible coming off the list frame but his receiving was good but not outstanding but it that's such a big part of his game at least it seemed like it it, do you think that that's an element where Etienne could be 1,300 yards on the ground and maybe 500, 600 through the air? Yeah, sure. He's obviously versatile. I, I, For me, you know, and you guys study this closer than me in Jacksonville, but for me, what was so impressive to me about ETN wasn't the pass catching because that's what I expected coming out of Clemson. What was impressive to me was, like, how tough he was. Like, with all the between-the-tackle stuff, you know, I thought, and we saw it play out at the beginning of the year, I thought, you know what, James Robinson's going to be the hammer, and then you're going to use ETN in space and kind of do a thunder and lightning thing. And then, you know, Robinson moves on to the Jets, and, you know, you get some nice snaps out of Jermichael Hasty, but ultimately, like, Travis Etienne was thunder and lightning. He was both. So um, really excited to see, and he came through the season healthy, which I think is most important. You know, a lot of times when, when guys have injuries like what Travis suffered, you know, maybe there's a year before the explosiveness comes back, and that wasn't the case. Clearly, second half of the year, he was nothing short of fantastic. Do you get a sense the Jaguars are... are- winning games now they played very well in the second half so that does that limit trevor lawrence's fantasy upside in terms of maybe there won't be as many fourth quarters where he's got to air it out because they're down by 10 14 points do you even do you let that factor in at all a, a little bit but i think again when you when you consider the fact that look doug peterson's a former quarterback he's a former nfl quarterback he's an andy reed disciple and doug peterson's going to throw he's always going to throw and so when you think about the number of weapons they have there, you think about Trevor's own ability, Trevor, another year in this system, you know, finally, you know, washing off the Urban Meyer uh, disaster, like, and the mobility of Trevor. I just don't think Trevor gets talked enough about him for his mobility, right? I mean, like, we're not saying he's Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen, but he's pretty mobile. And I don't think people give him enough credit for that. And especially in fantasy, that matters when you get 20, 30 extra yards. You get a couple of points uh, thanks to his legs as well. So um, it's it's one of the reasons why I have Trevor in the kind of that 10 to 12 range as opposed to the top five range uh, is because, to your point, I don't think they'll be getting into a ton of shootouts because it's an improving defense. But, no, at the end of the day, Trevor's still going to put up a lot of fantasy points. Matthew Berry, senior fantasy analyst for NBC Sports, kind enough to join us. In terms of looking at the uh, at the receivers for the Jaguars, and again, I'm sorry that the entire uh, convention decided to leave right as we started to do this. Um, but when you look at the receivers for the Jaguars, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Calvin Ridley, is it almost like just wait and see which one falls to you because none of you're not really exactly sure how that's going to go in terms of the higher? I mean, you, you would think Kirk and Ridley are the two, but how do you think you'll approach that as we get closer to drafts? I think it's, it's sort of seeing how, first off, we have to see what the status is on Ridley. Is he, is, he, is he there? Is he able to practice with the team? Can he get involved? What's he look like? He's been out of football for over a year. Um, uh, for well over a year, right? And how quickly can he get up to speed? 
you know, sometimes it also is kind of game plan specific. There are times where Christian Kirk was kind of on my love list because we knew that they were playing a team that was really poor against the slot, which is obviously where he, he lines up for most of the time. There are other times where we're like, oh, we think this is a Zay Jones game because, you know, this team struggles against perimeter wide receivers. And so um, in terms of overall season value, I'm going to prefer Kirk to Zay Jones. No disrespect to Zay Jones. I just think Kirk's a better receiver. Mm-hmm. So it's the guy that got paid more. You always try to follow the money a little bit yeah. uh, when it comes to uh, fantasy sports, especially when that money is followed by production. Kirk obviously had a huge year, and there's clearly a connection between him and Trevor. Uh, but I think both guys will uh, you know, be a nice draft picks this year. Obviously, rookies can have such an impact on fantasy football. Who are some that, that you think are going to be the most impactful? Uh, do you have a, an early sense of that yet, or the environment is so important we have to see where they get picked? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. You know, the example I always get, look, Bijan Robinson is going to be a star wherever he goes, right? But the example I always give is the year that Derrick Henry came out, I thought he was the best running back coming out of football that year, just from a pure prospect standpoint. But then he goes to Tennessee where he's going to back up DeMarco Murray, and you're like, all right, well, there's no fantasy value there. He's literally like it took Derrick Henry like three years to get on the field. He was backing up uh, Murray and, and Deion Lewis, of all things. <laughs> like, so it's, it's all – there have been examples of players that aren't as good, but they get – they're in a fantasy-friendly environment. They get an opportunity to shine, and suddenly, you know, they have more fantasy relevance than players that are better than them, just because of the opportunity. And so, um, so I think it depends, you know, um, in terms of. I always say this: fantasy success comes from two things: talent and opportunity. The talent we know from all these prospects, but we don't know the opportunity yet. So it's impossible to really to say like, "Oh, I love that guy or that guy," until we know what team they're on what scheme they're going to be playing on, what their opportunity for playing time is, and how well that meshes with, you know, what the, who their quarterback is. And all, a lot of things that go into a player's fantasy success or lack thereof. So, yeah, I talk to me after the draft. Yeah. Any buy low options that you're excited about and around the NFL? Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson coming off struggles. Uh, any anybody receiver, running back that maybe didn't have the strongest year, but you think you could get it uh, at a good value? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm I'm buying a Russell Wilson bounce back. I think with with uh, Sean Payton there, I think there's no way he's as bad as as he was. I you know I kind of like guys that that performed well but are coming off of an injury, like uh, you know I'm a you know, like J.K. Dobbins. Like, you know, no one's really talking about J.K. Dobbins. But, you know, here at the Combine, uh, Coach Harbaugh talking and uh, General Manager DaCosta both talking about the fact that, you know, they expect him to be 100% fully healthy. And so you're kind of interested about that. Obviously, it depends on what happens with Lamar. But, um, you know, so I'm a big believer in talent that just underproduced for for some reason. Mm -hmm. Tell us about everything that's going on with you, NBC. Tell us about your book and, and where uh, where fans can, can get all your content. Well, they can just, uh, you know, we're, we're having a lot of fun over at NBC. So I do a, uh, I do a daily show that will be weekly now in the offseason for Peacock called Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Barry. You can catch episodes on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. So uh, that's, that's pretty exciting as well. And then, um, you know, mostly this summer I'm going to be – studying players and spending some time with the family getting ready for the season awesome matthew berry thank you so much for your time really appreciate it my pleasure